hey, Merry Christmas, I guess. The Texans didn't do anything to contribute to that Merry Christmas, but maybe your material goods made up for it on Christmas Day. I'm Seth Payne, former Texans player, played in the NFL for 10 years, played uh, for the Texans for five years. If you came here via the algorithm and you're a Browns fan, congratulations to you. Sustain yourself on our tiers. Uh, I'm actually a grudging admirer of your team's grittiness. Let's get it started. First play from scrimmage, and D'Amico Ryans had been warning everybody all week long that Joe Flacco still has a lot of touch on the deep ball, as you Browns fans know. Here is Amari Cooper lined up right there, all by himself on the left side of the field. You've got a wide receiver coming in to block Jonathan Grenard. So you're not getting any pass rush, and Joe Flacco lets it fly. Well, that's all right. We've got two guys, Jimmy Ward and Steven Nelson. Uh, uh, they just become spectators there. That's cool. Um, John Grenard, I know a lot of people thought that John Grenard may have gotten held on this play, and I know how bad it looked. I'm, I'm going to tell you this, honestly. Grenard sinks that rip. Once you sink the rip, it's less likely that you're going to get called for a hold. Uh, so it, that's just the way it goes. And then especially if the offensive lineman can stay somewhat in front of him, he ends up corkscrewing him down, and you're just not going to get that call. Don't kill me. I'm just a, I'm just a simple messenger. And honestly, I'm actually kind of glad that if it was going to be a blowout anyway, I'm glad that Browns did that before the Texans lost three of their defensive starters to injury in this game because it was a demonstration that, look, it was it, they were not ready to play. I mean, that Joe Flacco in the deep ball. Joe Flacco and Amari Cooper, that's all you had to worry about. That's all you had to think about this week. And no matter who's injured, the guys playing on the field can't make mental errors to the tune of Jalen Petrie, a starter, getting benched. Like, that wasn't because of injury. Focus, Seth. Uh, John Grenard, here's one of those injuries. John Grenard ends up getting his ankle dinged by a teammate. He goes down. He's been having a hell of a year. Hopefully, that's not that big of a deal. Here, of course, we have a direct snap to Tajay Spears. Derek Stingley, bless his heart, gets a little too ambitious for his own good. All he's got to do is stay outside and force this thing inside. But he decides to butt up James Hudson like he's Brian Urlacher or something. You can't do that, son. You're too tiny. Davis Mills. Package engaged. Taysom Hill 2.0. No, he, he Jeff Driscoll's it. Here's Joe spinning out of trouble, throwing for a first down. Uh, I get really, really tired of people acting like Joe Flacco is a Redwood. He's a he's an anthropomorphized Redwood. He's more agile than you expect, like some character from Fantasia, but he's on LSD. He's like Ben Roethlisberger minus 16 pints of beer. Joe Flacco placing the ball between Amari Cooper and the sideline. 265 yards receiving on the day. Most in Browns history. We gave a Browns quarterback and receiver a roofed stadium instead of snow squalls in a polluted lake. Look what happens. 265 yards receiving to Amari Cooper. Hey, here we go. Devin Singletary run. If this thing stays close, this run game might come in handy. Just kill me. This was nice by Juice Scruggs and Laramie Tunsil. Hip to hip. Trading guys off. That was really nice. And snap back to reality. Oh, there goes gravity. John Grenard out. So Majai Sanders in his space. He bites on the run action here, as do the linebackers, as does Jalen Petrie, who jumps this route by, I believe, David Njoku. And look what the freaking hell happens here. You wonder why Jalen Petra has mentioned this game. I haven't seen the all 22 yet, but I'm guessing that when the dude that hasn't played defense all season long yet um, is singled up on Amari Cooper, he's probably supposed to have some safety help over the top, but Jalen Petra couldn't help himself. He comes loping in here at the end. There you go. Yeah. 19 plays he had in this game. That's the fewest plays by far that Jalen Petrie has played. And I think a, a message was hopefully sent that he's got to learn when and where to be aggressive. He's just he's just jumping too much underneath stuff. Oh, Damian Pierce. Watch this. Oh, Damian. Look at this. Damian's been an MIA for the most part since his injury. And this was beautiful to see. The one downside of this was that the kicker for the Browns got injured on this play. And the Browns end up going for for it on fourth down a lot, six times. They were four of six on fourth down. I think the score was a little bit more of a blowout than it would have been because of that, because when they would have kicked the field goal, they actually kept driving. But I'm like, that. it's not an excuse. They're still going to lose, just maybe not by as much. So I'll excuse Damian Pierce for uh, injuring the other team's kicker. So, ooh, oh, right there. That's a good thumbnail for this video if the Texans end up 
winning this game. Huzzah! Miles Garrett doing very Miles Garrett things here, just destroying it. Look, they asked Dalton Schultz to block Miles Garrett. I'm okay with that. It happens. But you also do run the risk of him just actually, like, theoretically shedding too fast. But he's Miles Garrett. And just like J.J. Watt, he can get away with not quite following the rules and laws of physics and football because he's Miles freaking Garrett. Okay, I've got Charlie Heck circled here. I want you to understand one thing. This isn't a perfect rep by Charlie Heck, but it's made worse by the fact that Case Keenum takes an 11-yard drop, bails out the back of the pocket, even though there's room to step up or scramble otherwise. And this is called back because somebody got face smushed, apparently. And uh, it doesn't end up mattering because next play, Browns show blitz. The sneaky, deceptive Browns bail out and don't blitz. This flummoxes Keenum enough that he doesn't know where to go with the ball. And again, bailing out backwards, like that's that's old Case Keenum. That's 2013 Case Keenum combined with an aging Case Keenum who can't quite scramble the way maybe a younger Case Keenum would. It got, it got ugly. Oh, uh, Malik Collins appreciation tweet right here. Watch him just sink his hips on that double. An impenetrable wall. This is really good right here. No blitz or anything, just flat out butt whooping up front. They did hold Jerome Ford to... 1.8 yards per carry in this game. I, it was all for nothing. I mean, honestly, great. They stopped the run, it, which helped set up getting torched on play action a few times. The pass rush obviously wasn't what it has been. But that looked like a sleeker Michael Dean Perry out there. Know your history, kids. Here, Oh, David and Joku, six receptions and a touchdown on the day. Here you've got your classic cover two Tampa where the middle linebacker is going to be trying to cover a vastly superior athlete. And you split the safeties and bada bing, bada boom. There you go. Nice play. Let's get, do we get the ring photo? We do. David and Joku stealing the package off your porch. Not a fan of that end zone camera from the goalpost. Low picture quality to me. Watch my team get decimated. Let's see, what do we got here? Oh, keep your eyes on this linebacker. Where the, the Texans actually keep seven in to block on this play. Damn near max protection. So you can avoid situations like this where your tight end and your offensive tackle block one guy Well, another guy runs free and another guy just destroys his block so thoroughly that Case has to go down like he's holding his boogie board and a wave is crashing down on him. Good rush by Malik Collins, but oh, oh, and it ends up yielding an interception by Houston Carson. At the time, it looked like it was just an arm punt uh, because the Texans weren't doing anything. Especially hard to do anything when Juice Scruggs, the guard, who I hope I hope Juice Scruggs, the guard, dies a peaceful death and Juice Scruggs, the center, can reemerge next year because I, I don't think he's I don't think he's meant to be doing this all day long. Uh, just watch this. It takes a that's Xavier Suofolo level of. Yeah. You know, yeah. Schultz got a first down on that, but whatever. Schultz does a good job here. And honestly, Keenum does a really good job, too, anticipating. Schultz comes wide open in that gap right there. The problem is the ball gets tipped. Physics lesson, kid. Did you know that a hand, like all objects, are mostly empty space? And yet somehow when a hand hits a leathery empty space, another empty space can catch the empty space. And none of that fills the empty space in my heart. Browns get a reprieve. Flacco comes back from the interception to throw deep down the right sideline to Amari oh, Cooper. This is going to be a little bit cliche. Derek Singley, by the way, uh, has gotten a lot better in zone coverage this year. I mean, this isn't the most egregious of sins or anything, but he also does. He could, he could whip back around on that a little bit quicker. Stay tuned, though, because same drive, last play of the half. Derek Stingley gets an interception. Good job, Derek Stingley. First play of the second half. Halftime adjustments were made. Devin Singletary takes the snap, totes it across the imaginary yellow line, and across the 50, path to glory here, right? Yeah, it's not going to be. But uh, I do want to point this out. Laramie Tunsil it does a nice little crafty veteran move. He does this a lot and gets away with it because he should. As a former defensive lineman, it pains me to say this, but he gives in a, just a quick little tug on some of these zone blocking plays but releases immediately it's a catch and release and the officials never call that the defensive linemen always complain as they should but watch again right there just a little that's it in and out nobody gets hurt kids that's a lesson 
You can get away with almost any crime in this life if you just are quick and efficient with it. Bank robbery, wire fraud, coitus interruptus. I, I wish I wish Larry would coitus interruptus his false starts, but what are you going to do? A lot of people ask why the Texans didn't blitz more. They did blitz, just I think it ended up either matching up or being more effective versus the run. Here's Des King doing the Lord's work, getting into the backfield. Again, remember 1.8 yards per carry on the day, which does a whole lot for you in like 1988, but in modern football, it's not as impressive. Now, here's an actual pass rush. Oh, yeah, I forgot Joe Flacco and Amari Cooper went down to the crossroads and made a deal with the devil. I I felt like I was at the Herman Park traffic circle all afternoon. I was in literal hell. Amari Cooper over the middle, Derek Stingley. I know a lot of people wanted Derek Stingley to travel with Amari Cooper. Um, it, it was that kind of day where like, it's not like that's horrible coverage or anything. Stingley's in position to make a play. It's just Flacco and Amari Cooper are the new Joe Montana and Jerry Rice. I'll debate you. I'll put up a I'll put up a card table in the park and put a sign up and everything. Debate your ass. Oh, and by the way, as far as the the blitzing goes, this was a blitz. Cover zero. Mari Cooper down there at the bottom, and and like asking you shall receive, man. You got Joe Montana throwing to Jerry Cooper, third and eight. Nothing to lose. Case Keenum throws a YOLO ball, but he's getting hit as he throws it, and uh, it, it didn't go well. Zedaria Smith had a hell of a day. I'm going to guess this is another Amari Cooper. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Steven Nelson back in the game. I mean, Nelson had him covered. If he could turn around and make a play on the ball, that would be nice, but we've already established we're not getting nice things for, for Christmas this year. I think it's got something to do with all those stupid elves on shelves everywhere now. I don't, and I don't understand that new tradition, and I refuse to learn it till I get grandkids. Fourth and six. Oh yeah, just here's another example of uh, if you're up by twenty-eight to seven at this point in the fourth quarter. Traditionally, you're gonna kick a field goal, but when you have no field goal kicker, you just do the the same old boring cliche thing: throw it to Amari Cooper. So instead, it ends up being. 36 to 7 instead of 31 to 7 after they get the two point conversion too. Um Texans have a really respectable run defense but on this one um they're just not going to get it done. There's your two point conversion. It's that kind of day. Now don't get me wrong, the Texans were going to get beat thoroughly whether the kicker was healthy or not. It's just on this day when you had one team that was at its worst playing another team that was at its best, uh, it actually worked out for the benefit of, of that team. And the Browns are a gritty, scrappy bunch. And Joe Flacco and Amari Cooper are playing out of their minds. I'm genuinely happy for those guys as long as they don't run into the Texans in the playoffs. I'm not going to show Davis Mills in the fourth quarter because I'm going to do a separate video for that. Suffice it to say that, yes, he did good things in moving the ball but it was at 4.65 yards per attempt it, versus a defense that was specifically playing to allow 4.65 yards per attempt. The Browns had been coming up and challenging at the line of scrimmage, playing man all game long. In the fourth quarter, they backed the hell off and they played prevent because they had such a huge lead. So I, I'll i get into exactly what I hope happens if C.J. Stroud can't play this week, but fingers crossed C.J. Stroud can play. And lucky for the Texans, the rest of the AFC South sucked this weekend. Trevor Lawrence looks like he might have a shoulder injury of some level of seriousness. So we'll see. Very much in play for the division. Very much in play for the playoffs. I'm Seth Payne. If you liked it, share it, subscribe it, tell a friend. Thank the Lord. See you, everybody.